The year is 1888, the place Purgatory. Existing between life and death is William Mason, a former US Marshal on a quest for ghostly justice. Or is it revenge? For Mason, there may not be a difference. Developed by Upstream Arcade and published by Raw Fury, West of Dead checks many of your standard roguelike boxes, but checks them well and with style. Its procedurally generated corridors contain all kinds of weapons, a host of secrets, and a brutal difficulty. The mystery of who West of Dead's characters are and how they got here provides motivation to persist through each failure. Collect memories from Mason's previous life, and assuming you survive long enough to return them, a clearer picture of his quest comes into focus, while the coarse, rugged tones of Ron Perlman bring the character to life. I see a tall man in a suit, standing in front of a crowded room. I feel a swell of pride as he pins something to my chest. A tin star. With its slower, cover-based combat, West of Dead blends twin-stick shooting with an emphasis on timing, patience, and accuracy. If you're more accustomed to the breakneck speed of other top-down roguelikes, this slower pace may take some time to get used to, as it did for me. But once acclimated and when it functions, this paranormal western is as exhilarating a roguelike as they come. West of Dead is not a bullet hill, and Mason not a speedy character. He can dive to dodge attacks, but he moves pretty slowly, and whether it be from the barrel of a gun or the maw of a demon dog, enemy attacks are accurate and fast. Cover is your salvation. Get near it and Mason automatically sticks to it, an attraction that's strong enough to make getting into cover easy, but soft enough to quickly slip away from at a moment's notice. Red arrows indicate an enemy is about to attack and where it's coming from, giving you a brief second to react and plan future moves. Bust open a door and you're sliding, diving, and trading shots with enemy combatants. Lanterns hung from the ceiling stun enemies when lit, letting you play a little more aggressively or surprise a group of enemies before they've had a chance to react. Your quick decision making though is going to be done within the confines of twin stick gunplay that doubles down on timing and precision. All weapons fire differently, some, assuming you're using a controller, you only need to hold the trigger to fire, while others won't fire until you've pressed and released the trigger, allowing Mason to steady his aim. This is another element that was a little awkward for me to get a handle of at first. While Mason has a limited ammo, weapons reload at different speeds, one bullet at a time, and diving or taking aim stalls the reload timer. So if you're diving and spamming the triggers in the middle of a fight, it's likely you'll be firing inaccurately and constantly low on ammo. The result of this small learning curve is an immense satisfaction from bursting into a room not knowing what to expect and clearing it without taking a single hit. In these moments, you're a smooth, well-disciplined gunslinger, carefully improvising your way through intense high-stakes gunfights, wasting few bullets in the process. At its best, West of Dead's combat is excellent. As you get into the later levels, though, the combat tends to break down. There are multiple types of enemies. Some move slowly and fire rifles, others use melee-based attacks and move quickly to flush you out of cover. In more advanced levels, enemies are more numerous and have much more health, and firefights become increasingly overwhelming. I often found myself retreating into hallways to reload or to keep from being surrounded. Once outside their rooms, though, enemies become much harder to hit. This partially feels like a deterrent. Enemies obscured in darkness are tougher to shoot. It's another benefit to igniting lanterns. But there are no lanterns in hallways and interconnecting rooms. If you exit a room during combat, all of West of Dead's precision and accuracy come to a sudden halt. And purposefully deterred from or not, it's a strategy made necessary by faster enemies as well as its randomized rooms that may place enemies near the entrance. Each level is organized the same way. Hallways connect rooms holding enemies, the occasional upgrade station, item chests, and a traitor. Killing enemies grants you two currencies, iron and sin. The trader swaps iron for weapons and abilities, purchases that don't carry over from life to life, while a mysterious witch found in between levels redeems sin for unlocks that are permanent, though the witch's unlocks are more tied to levels than they are mason. Where with some roguelikes, upgrades carry over from life to life, making your character stronger and more capable for each run, in West of Dead, mason's health and damage revert back to their starting values every time you start a new run. 
one. Upgrade stations scattered throughout the levels give you three options to upgrade Mason, including more health and damage, but you'll have to find them again for each individual run. This structure leaves a lot up to player skill and luck, and pretty heavily incentivizes fully exploring each level since upgrade stations are the only way to increase Mason's health and damage. You can leave a level as soon as you find the exit, but doing so without upgrades sets you at a disadvantage. Difficulty rises quickly, enemies get faster, do more damage, and have more health. But underneath this exponential difficulty, the combat eventually buckles. Even with high damage weapons and upgrades, it gets to a point that you're constantly flushed out of cover or retreating into hallways. At the same time, when you choose one of Mason's three upgrade paths, subsequent upgrades become less effective, meaning it's not as advantageous to find upgrades in later levels as the difficulty rises. Finding your way through harder levels feels impractical, and rushing through them to find the exit suddenly becomes the better option. With the front end's slower, methodical combat and the latter half's more chaotic, disorganized combat, West of Dead's pacing becomes severely disrupted, a disruption that overflows into your ultimate end goal. West of Dead doesn't always feel balanced, but even with all its imperfections on the table, ten hours in I still find myself curious about what secrets remain undiscovered, and where Mason's journey for justice and revenge will eventually take him.